With us now, we have the ranking member of the House Select Committee on Intelligence, Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff of California, also with us for this conversation. Staff writer at The Atlantic, Julia Yaffe. I want to talk uh, Facebook. I want to talk Internet. And, you know, Adam, you're a great person to talk to. But, Julia, you, uh, you, we were talking about Ben Shapiro earlier being one of the more bullied people on social media and Twitter in the 2016 campaign. Seems to me you were right up there. Uh, yeah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> so, okay. The house Julia, like days, Julia right? Yaffe, fresh off an MIT event last night. Thank you for being with us. Okay, well, we'll get back to Thanks you in a second. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, we'll get right back to you, Julia. So, there are a lot of people. I want to know, why does Twitter allow all the Russian bots to go in and completely shape a debate online? Why does Facebook... Uh, are, is Facebook coming forward with the information that you need to make sure this doesn't happen again? Is Twitter cooperating? Uh, Google, are they cooperating? Is everybody cooperating They need to, uh, in a way they need to to make sure that foreign countries, foreign adversaries, don't try to impact our elections? They are cooperating, but there's a lot more information we need. Uh, I really don't think we have, uh, by any means, a full picture of what the Russians did on social media. Uh, but even what we do know uh, is is profoundly disturbing. Uh, just in the last couple of weeks, the public reports uh, about not only the paid advertising the Russians did on Facebook, but the fact that the Russians used organizing tools to try to organize protests, that they had a web page in Texas that was bigger than the Texas Republican Party in terms of its popularity. Uh, this, you know, confirms one of the conclusions of the intelligence community from earlier, and that is Separate and apart from their desire to uh, help Donald Trump or hurt Hillary Clinton, they wanted to hurt America. They wanted to play on these internal divisions with the country, aggravate them, grow the divisions w wider. Uh, and this is why so much of their advertising, their organizing was centered around these divisive issues, these uh, sort of anti-immigrant, uh, anti-Muslim issues designed to inflame the American public. And Julia, uh, you've talked about it before talked about the strategy, Vladimir Putin's strategy, Russia's strategy. It's actually, even though we don't like it, it's fairly astute. If you can project power by creating a couple of million bots uh, with some basic programming that actually might bend a debate a little bit in one direction or another, that's actually a pretty good use of your resources if you're Russia, right? Well, it's, there's a reason they call it asymmetric warfare is that it doesn't take much. This is actually pretty simple to do. It's very cheap so you for very little resources you get a big bang for your buck the other thing is um, as people smarter than I have pointed out this is we've been seeing this since 2014 this is basically Vladimir Putin taking methods that he honed at home uh, working on against internal opponents independent journalists activists and exporting it first to Europe then to the US these bots DDoS attacks hacks um, hack and dumps we saw that all in Russia over the years so actually you know I've been subjected to the same stuff in Russia and then I came here and thought okay I'm free and clear and here we are again yeah uh, well Adam let, let, let me ask you about about uh, whether this is actually what we should focus on the most obviously you've got a job to do the committees have a job to do Mueller has a job to do regarding collusion and any obstruction issues and whatever whatever flows from that but for the long-term good of this constitutional republic isn't this what we really need to focus on uh, in the long run and make yeah, sure we protect ourselves I from this you're absolutely future. right um, that yes we need to get to the bottom of whether there was any coordination between the campaign of the russians but fundamentally we need to understand what the russians were doing to try to destroy our country to are we to, aggressively doing that um, you know we are trying we are trying uh, but we have a lot more work to do are republicans it. working do that? You know, Republicans are working with us. Uh, we certainly have our differences, and you get to see a lot of those played out in public. Uh, but, but by and large, all patriotic Americans, Democrats and Republicans, uh, need to recognize, and I think many do recognize in Congress as well as outside of Congress, that this was an attack on our country. Uh, as Julie was saying, this is a, you know, very much a KGB playbook kind of attack. So division from within, it's a great asymmetrical weapon because there's always some level of deniability. The Russians can always say it wasn't us, uh, and they're never going to want to show the full proof of how we know that the Russians were doing this. But Congressman, do the do the 
tech companies get that? Does Silicon Valley get that? I don't really, for, from what I can tell based on covering your investigation and on watching what else they're doing on Capitol Hill, they seem reluctant to testify, they seem reluctant to admit that this was even happening. Are you getting what you need from them? Are they acting in America's national security interest? You know, we need to get a lot more from the technology companies. I think they were slow to realize how their platforms were being used. Uh, and. And I think we still don't have the complete answers. Uh, in part, I think they were slow to realize it uh, because it was a difficult thing to identify. In part, it may be, look, it's against their economic interest to be advertising problems about how a foreign government was exploiting their technology. So there's a natural so what can economic Congress do interest. To address that? I mean, does, well, does we, need to, we need to compel these companies uh, to give us good answers. And what makes this so difficult, frankly, is it's not as if we can simply uh, ask them to send us their data and analyze it ourselves. We need their own expertise. We need their own willingness to devote considerable resources to looking at what happened on their own systems, and we need to be able to rely on the information they provide us. Jill, it's Donnie Deutsch. You have a great piece uh, in The Atlantic about, uh, we all know that Trump has tried, or did try to build in Russia. Your piece talks about why it didn't happen. And Donnie, uh, um, what, what, what asked the question, why didn't it happen? I did. <laughs> well, you really, you just sort of left it hanging out there, man. As far as you, you didn't ask the question. I like your jacket, right? Why didn't it happen? There you go. Good Thank you. That is a brilliant, <laughs> insightful question, you, which sir. Julia will answer now. Thank you, sir. So the reason it didn't happen is, first of all, you need a good Russian partner on the ground because the it's a very corrupt, the world of Moscow real estate is a very corrupt world. You need a lot of papers and permits and permissions, etc., to get a building out of the ground, and you need a good Russian partner with good political connections to do that, which Donald Trump never did. He had guys like Felix Satter running around that was too sketchy even for the Russians. The Russians were like, uh, I don't know, we don't know about this guy. The other, the so, other thing is so that Donald if Trump... You're, <laughs> if you're too sketchy for the Russians, <laughs> that should say something about your partnership. But, you know, Julia, at the bottom... Wait, but the, what this does the, reveal, the other though, thing, really quickly, and then I'll let you do the other thing, but this uh -huh. does reveal, when we're all talking about collusion, collusion, and he's in with Putin, he's here, you know, we're finding out that his hapless lawyer is sending emails to a general account joe at msnbc.com like vladimir putin at like russia.com i mean it, they don't it seemed like they didn't have any contacts uh that would suggest collusion they certainly bragged about it that's kind of the problem is there was a lot of bragging a lot of building themselves up to be bigger than they were which you know if anybody can smell a con man a mile away it's the russians and they smelled one here the other thing is that donald trump doesn't invest anything in these properties that are developed with his name on it he just takes money out for his name he you pay him for his name and the russians were like i'm sorry who are you what is a trump why are we paying thirty percent extra for this they this was not a recognition recognizable brand and especially not they were willing to pay extra for which is kind of funny congressman real quick the conflict in ukraine has to be the hottest frozen conflict on the planet right now ten thousand dead almost thirty thousand wounded john Kerry, former secretary of state is in ukraine this morning i'm going to summarize something he said by uh, moscow times managing El editor oliver carroll Russian behavior today stems from Western triumphalism in the 1990s at a time when Russia needed financial assistance, which it did receive, by the way. Do you agree with that statement? And if so, does that mean that we should not be pursuing uh, lethal aid to uh, Western Ukraine and Kiev? Well, I, I think we should be pursuing lethal aid. I think, frankly, we should have been providing defensive arms to Ukraine from the very beginning. Uh, we and other countries made a commitment to Ukraine if they gave up their nukes uh, in 1994, which they did, we would help assure their territorial integrity. And uh, and I think we have not lived up to that full commitment. Do you think uh, Russian irredentism today is our fault? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. Uh, you know, certainly the, the fact that uh, so many of their neighbors were moving in a Western direction, they were joining NATO, they were uh, they were joining the European Union, stoked Russian fears. But frankly, these countries get to choose their own destiny. Uh, and, and I think we should support that and have support. I think that was the right decision, notwithstanding the fact that it might raise Russian fears. Uh, every country has the right of its own self-determination. Uh, and I think they chose uh, to merge with, with more forward-leaning economies and be part of a better international system. And I think that was 